Yes, this is kind of a low budget production. <laughs> I've got like two minutes left. Okay, and uh, the camera cut me off. All right. Yes, hunting includes fishing. So I can actually slow down a little bit now. Um, you can always slow me down on YouTube, right? Just stretch this out. Uh, so people are moving island island. For, to borrow a term from another era of history, island hopping. Right? Um, they built, uh, yes, canoes. Outrigger canoes, actually. So they start to design pretty exquisite boats. There's no writing, but they figured out how to take to the, the rough Pacific waters of the well, South Pacific, right? You have a canoe, and to stop it from tipping over, you put wings on it and small canoes on the end of the wings, pontoons, okay? Outrigger canoe, pretty stable, island to island to island. And um, look, when the Europeans arrived, 1780s, James Cook, looking for Terra Nullis, right? This lost southern continent. The, the Europeans are going to say, well, these are cave people. They're inferior. We can take their, their land, even though what would we do with it? It's mostly desert. But these people are inferior, and we can tell them what to do. Um, those people have learned to live with their environment, right? In harmony with their environment. In a way, the Europeans were soon to uh, break that balance, okay? Right about the time of James Cook, 1780s, right, landing in Australia, New Zealand, ends up in Hawaii, and Alaska, ends up being killed in Hawaii, actually. Um, the Europeans, especially the English, are just about to engage in the Industrial Revolution, early proto-industrial phase, right? They're making things by hand. Soon it's going to be using water power and gradually steam, the burning of fossil fuels. So before we think the Aboriginal people were somehow uh, inferior, they're living in harmony with their environment, which was a very dry land. They knew how to fish, they knew uh, what crops, natural crops that they could eat, what they could hunt. They domesticated very few animals. Very few animals, similar to the Native Americans, very few animals made it to Australia from, through migration. And the ones that did are pretty darn hard to domesticate. Try domesticating a kangaroo, right? It's going to kick you right into the... You know, can't kick you out the door if you don't have a door, but you know what I mean. Right? Uh, so people would continue to fish, hunt, gather. Uh, they left records, they painted rocks, they actually in silhouettes of their hands. They, were, they had weapons that if you threw the weapon and missed your target, it would come back to you, you could try again, boomerang, right? Figured out kind of aerodynamics. Um, so sophisticated in their own way. Right? Sophisticated in their own way. Even though they didn't have writing in cities. Uh, they did have less contact with the outside world, the Aboriginal people of Australia. This is an image from the 1800s. Some British guy did this in the British Royal Museum. Borrow that, and there's your, your citation. Um, in New Guinea, there's going to be farming. This was a wetter uh, island. Okay, once it becomes an island, once the, the sea levels rose, there could be farming there. But farming is going to be very difficult in Australia. Even in the late 1800s, when there are like steam pumps in modern irrigation, okay, they end up raising sheep there on the, the, the little grass that actually grew. Uh, they end up sending convicts, so-called. The poor people of Britain, uh, who survived the journey, get sent to Australia because it was just kind of a way to, to get rid of people. They, they didn't want Britain. So this is the, the history of early Australia. Island hopping through these islands. Yeah, there's something else to say. The island hopping, let's see if I missed anything. Whoops. Wrong way. Yeah, through the Pacific Islands, all the way to Hawaii by about 1,800 years ago, fewer than 2,000 years ago, and outrigger canoes. So people who didn't uh, have writing or cities could build really exquisitely designed boats that, look, you and I could not design, okay? These were really advanced. Um, so pretty high-tech boats that could take to the waters of the Pacific. And a way of dealing with a lack of resources. If there's too many people on this island, instead of going to war and fighting over the resources, hey, goodbye, we're going to take our canoe and go to the next island. And then when there's too many people there, because we have children, right, we'll go to the next one, the next one, the next one, right? So this island hopping, uh, in many ways, helped to keep the peace. I don't want to over-romanticize the people of the South Pacific, certainly there was war. The Maori of New Zealand knew how to make war, right, and they made war against the British, actually. Um, but they figured out a way mostly to live in harmony with nature and, and with each other as well. And that's an achievement that, for which we should give them credit. Okay, this is actually now the end of chapter 6.
thought I could squeeze it all into one segment, but uh, a few minutes late. Um, quiz for chapter six popping up probably right now as we speak, or you know, as I speak and you listen. Um, so we're into a new unit. Uh, the next exam will consist of chapters six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Another five chapters, yes. Uh, in the next exam, we'll have a similar format to the one you just hopefully concluded, and that will be administered October 12th through the 19th. I'm not changing any, anything, that's in the original syllabus. Right? So as always, um, email me, call me, if you want to Zoom one-on-one, -on -one, or a group of you on a Zoom, a number of you again, uh, on one side, or many sides, and me on the other, that's fine too. I will also try to do a Zoom review and actually get it recorded sometime shortly before the second exam. And I, again, will send out a kind of a doodle poll, just a way of like, hey, when are you, most of you guys available? Uh, that's totally optional, right? This class is asynchronous, which means you can do this stuff whenever you want, along, along, as long as you follow the deadlines. All right, so what's next? Chapter 7, The Empires of Persia, is we would turn our attention really, you know, back into, uh, well, the Fertile Crescent, back into what's sometimes called the Middle East. Uh, we're going to look at ancient and classical Iran. All right, Iran. So that's, uh, I think, a really interesting chapter. We start to see the birth of, uh, of, of human rights, maybe champions of human rights, and, and uh, the, the ruler of Persia, for example, who was called Cyrus the Great by Jewish people. Interesting, right? He wasn't Jewish. That's where we'll conclude. Um, good luck with everything. Be in touch soon. Right, thanks.